All right, so let's get to the top of the news because I know that a lot of our DBL Nation has brought this up. We've been chatting about it. Have you guys seen this? A local news reporter in Houston named Ivory Hecker went rogue on live TV. She called out the Fox station where she works, saying they were muzzling her, quote unquote. Take a look. Thanks, guys. That's right. Before we get to that story, I want to let you, the viewers, know that Fox Corp has been muzzling me to keep certain information from you, the viewers. And from what I'm gathering, I am not the only reporter being too subjected to this. I am going to be releasing some recordings about what goes on behind the scenes at Fox because it applies to you, the viewers. I found a nonprofit journalism group called Project Veritas. It's going to put that out tomorrow, so tune into them. But as for this heat wave across Texas, you can see what it's doing to AC units. Wow. <laughs> you can see Whoa. what it's doing to the back of his shirt. It's sweaty. It's yes. sweaty. Very All sweaty right. man. Let's get to the story. So how do you think her station responded? Here's the phone call Ivory got from the assistant news director. Take a listen. All right. Um, I wanted to call you and let you know that you are suspended effective immediately. Pending further review. Okay. I would ask I would ask you not to come to the station, okay? Okay. All right, and we will be in touch. Surprise, surprise. Now we've been checking with Project Veritas. Okay. Ver <laughs> Project Veritas. <laughs> And nothing has yet been published regarding her being muzzled. But if you're curious what Project Veritas is all about, it is a far-right activist group founded by James O'Keefe that uses secret recordings to discredit media organizations and other groups. All right, so Al, you had a lot to say while okay. I was telling the story. What do you think of this and about her going rogue? Well, I mean, first of all, using terms like rogue is why we're here, Sam. Okay, no one's trying to muzzle. The, per the reporter is getting sent out, first of all, on the daytime shift to cover air conditionings. They're not gonna break some story uh, about Russia that. and the United States. I kinda do, because she's acting like she's being muzzled, but when she's on the phone and she had a chance to speak, all we heard was, okay. This is an example, and Jeff, you remember in that movie, Old School? When uh, Will Ferrell gets naked and he tells the whole party, we're going to go running down streaking. the street. Streaking. Streaking. We're going to go streaking. And then he realizes that it's just him running naked down the street. <laughs> That's what happens when everybody wants to have these big moments where they quit on air or they do the whole Jerry Maguire thing. And then you leave and you're just suspended immediately. Okay. And somebody else will cover the air conditioners. Okay. Yeah, they, I was wondering where that analogy was going and he hit it. He, he, he put it together. Does anyone disagree? Do you want me to play devil's advocate here? What do you mean? By she should still keep her job or what she did was a good idea? I'm not saying what she did is a good idea. You know, I'm a, I'm a rule follower, right? And I take sitting in this chair. Uh, this is a privilege. However, I also, I also can't speak for every single network out there. We are in a network where we're not muzzled, where we get paid to tell our viewer our opinion and we can be sincere. I don't know what was said behind closed doors to her. It looks bad on paper, of course, I'll give you that. But what if there is something nefarious that she feels is necessary to let the public know? I'm not saying that's the case, but I think we should always think about that. I just think she's discredited by the way she did it. The way she did it, if she does have something, do it where it's on Twitter and we can hear the recordings. Do it where Project Veritas comes out first. We haven't e even seen Project Veritas post anything. So I get what you're saying, but if you're gonna do it, do it well. How about this, and I'll just throw this wrench in there. What if she posed something that was a far left statement instead of a far right statement would she get the same treatment interesting i think so i mean I, she was there to talk about air conditioners if it was this show but if you she can, went on there and talked about air conditioners and for example just said something nefarious about donald trump she might get applauded for that not fired i i did for, I, I don't know about that i wonder Me if, she, if I, she, just yeah, I appreciate that yeah but like if she had gone on there and said i'm but you know something bad about the nfl and their concussion protocol policies that's not why she's there She's there to talk about the heat wave. And honestly, as we just saw in Texas with a bunch of people that, that almost froze to death, yeah. and now we have an incredible heat wave here yeah. in Colorado. People are dying. Can't imagine what's going but on you down there. The recordings that's a, that's a public health thing she's talking about. Yeah. It has no place in, in what else. Well, you get a YouTube page to discuss that All after right. work. Fair enough, fair enough. Chime in, DBL Nation. We always want to hear from you. So speaking of on hair mishaps, another one is going viral, and it's out of Namibia. And just a quick warning, there is a rather long... Awkward pause. <laughs> Take a look. And for more on this, Jessica, good afternoon, Jessica. Good evening. When we speak about sports, we are hearing that Coca Cola will be fighting in the No, day. you're not going to do that. You're just going to greet me and then you say, Take it away. You're not going to do that. Yes. Jessica, we're alive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh, you could almost hear like it was long enough for like the Jeopardy tune to play. Yeah. You gotta uh, lean into those moments though. You can't just sit she back. She did. And let she it. sat. The, the the first reporter sat in it, which I love. She didn't break. She was like, I'll wait. Oh. <laughs> Everybody was cringing. So we're gonna talk about the most awkward thing that happened to us on live TV. Okay, so Tori, do you remember this moment with you and Al? Yes, I needed aloe vera because this burn was so bad. It was an excellent burn. It was well said <laughs> and it put us on the map. Ladies and gentlemen, the Popeyes joke. Wow. Savor it. <laughs> Jeff looks a little bit more reactionary on this one. I feel like he's feeling the Popeyes. That's seasoning. Okay, oh. he's into the Popeyes. Tori, does that taste like a neighborhood you've never been to? <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> went viral. It went super viral on the shade room. The editors in the back were like, ho, ho, ho. You were like, good burn, good burn. <laughs> totally fair, well done. Yeah, I, I had no idea because I don't know, during that clip, a little behind the scenes, I had an excruciating, uh, I had to get a tooth uh, yeah, worked get a on. Tooth issue. I, I, I needed a crown, so I was in crazy pain. So I went straight to the dentist after that and then slept with whatever they gave me for like a day and a half, so I woke up and it was huge. Cute. But I had no idea throughout the weekend I was in so much pain, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, we have no muscle on us here. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> Not we at are all. unfiltered. Uh, and then there's, okay, so you guys all know that I tend to get words. We haven't we haven't noticed. Not at all. What are you talking about? Here's yet another example of me getting things confused. You sound like dude from the Taken with the skills. I was going speech. for Napoleon Dynamite, but okay. All right, Leslie Nielsen. <laughs> Leslie Nielsen. How about Liam Neeson? <laughs> wow, Leslie Let Nielsen from Naked Gun. Yes, he's been dead for about 41 years. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, you and. <laughs> I'm crying. Okay, enough. <laughs> I don't think we had to go back to 2019 to get a video like that. I know, but I didn't want to regurgitate recent ones. <laughs> That's oh, great. I don't know. You had some good ones. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> okay, so what about you, buddy? Do we have any of Jeff? I hope we do. Do you know if we have any of you? Of course. Me trying to read the prompt. Oh, goody. <laughs> Marie Osmond says she won't leave any of her millions to her kids. Instead, she's giving all her money to charity. The 60 year old performer says she's leaving her fortune. She's leaving none of her fortune to her kids. Would, I don't know what this says. <laughs> Is that bad for Is them? Is this gonna be bad for these kids? Let's talk about it. When Jeff just like throws it away, that's like. He, but he throw, he doesn't throw it away and throw the segment away. He throws it away and then just gives you the cliff notes version. Yeah. it's and just like yeah, it's bad. She's mad you know, at him. You know what someone <laughs> told me the, in the prompter? There's sometimes when you're like, you know what, just roll it. They're like, I guess, and they just have to roll the prompter. <laughs> yeah, because when I when I start tripping, then I I'm like, what did I just trip on? And my brain starts going, but I know what the story's about, so I can just be like, listen, Maria Osmond has eight kids. That's a lot of money to divide up between eight kids. You guys want to talk about it? That's what I want to do. But we're like, Maria Osmond, she was born in Mississippi and one is 24 years I'm like I don't need all that I'm sorry I love my writers <laughs> oh my gosh so we definitely aren't perfect on this show no. coming up on DBL Matthew McConaughey